Hey guys, today we're going to be discussing shockwave therapy. Basically everything about it from what it is, how it works, the different types, and how we can apply it to basically maximize our manhoods and even potential enlargement purposes. So stay tuned and we'll discuss all of that today. All right, guys, so like I said, we're gonna be discussing shockwave therapy, okay? And so for those don't, that don't know what shockwave therapy is, it's essentially special acoustic waves that are targeted at the tissue, basically with which it aims at, and it creates this like special characteristics that cause the pressure to like rise and fall rapidly. And when it does that, it can cause this like mechanical damage to the tissue that can result in releasing different types of growth factors and other beneficial things that can help with things such as like injury recovery and even um, even things like improving erectile dysfunction, okay? And so it differs from ultrasound in the sense that when we're talking about shockwave therapy, this purpose is I'm gonna be talking about low intensity shockwave therapy, but ultrasound tends to have a basically like heat generated with certain frequencies where when you're talking about shockwave therapy, there's, there's no thermal effects, okay? There's no heat generated. And so there's actually basically several proposed mechanisms for how it potentially might work. One of the drawbacks about this is nobody knows for sure how this works. And so there's the thought that microtrauma stimulates things like angiogenesis or the creation of new veins or the proliferation of existing veins, stem cell proliferation and nerve regeneration. And you can see this in some of the studies we talk about that there's things that are increased like um, VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor and things like endothelial nitric oxide synthase or the things that actually create nitric oxide in result of this exposure to the shockwave therapy. So there's basically a couple different types. Like I said, we're gonna be talking about the low intensity shockwave therapy. That's what's used on like penis and other type of organs, tendons, etc. There's also high intensity that the long name is like extracorporeal shockwave therapy or ESWT. And so the high intensity is stuff that they use on like kidney stones to literally like break up kidney stones. And so we're not gonna be having that anywhere near our penis because one of the contraindications is over major blood vessels or nerves. And basically your penis is a basically one big blood vessel and comprised of nerves as well. So you never wanna use that type of shockwave therapy here. One big difference is that there is something that's called radio wave, radial wave therapy. The biggest difference between radial wave therapy and focused shock wave, the low intensity shock wave therapy, is that when you have focused shock waves, I'll put up a picture here, but you can see that they basically start at a wide point and they cone down and focus on one specific point. They usually use higher energy and they penetrate deeper. Whereas the radial waves, those tend to start from a focus points and branch out. They don't penetrate nearly as deep, like a third as deep, and they're typically lower injuries, lower energies, excuse me. And so you want to make sure that you're using the low intensity shockwave therapy and not radio waves because radio waves for the most part are sham. Now, that being said, there is actually some data. So I'll put up a retrospective series that's actually not very good data, but it actually showed that whether you use the extracorporeal shockwave or you use radio waves, you can see that on this graph that they both had a significant improvement in erectile function. But for the most part, most academics, most urologists say that the radio wave is actually sham because it's just an inferior treatment. So make sure you're not getting that if you're trying to pursue shockwave therapy, okay? If you don't mind, take a second to like and subscribe. It really good, helps me know that this is worth it. And I put a lot of time and effort in these videos and it would mean a lot, so I appreciate it. So basically how it works, we already talked about that mechanical trauma that is stimulated from the acoustic waves basically hitting that tissue, but the exact mechanism is still unknown, okay? Here's a quote that I like from one of these papers. It said, neoangiogenesis, the recruitment of progenitor cells and resident stem cells improves microcirculation, vasodilation, and subsequent increase in nitric oxide, decrease in fibrosis, and nerve regeneration. So those are all of like the theoretical ways that this can help to improve things like specifically erectile dysfunction. So who benefits? Primarily Primarily, this is a treatment that has been studied for men with mild vascular or arteriogenic erectile dysfunction, okay? So those are like older guys that suffer from hypertension, aging, diabetes, some of these things that just cause a decrease in the function of the tension uh, of the tissue, okay? When we're looking at treatment specifics, you want the energy flux to be between 0.9 to 0.2 millijoules per millimeter squared, okay? In general, you're looking at about 3,000 pulses per treatment applied. Usually around 10 different positions are used on 
on the penis. You never apply this along the corpus spongiosum or along the glands of the penis. It's only on the corpus cavernosum, okay? Usually two to five treatments per week, measuring approximately 15 to 20 minutes each session. And like I said, you're applying that probe to multiple different areas uh, along your penis, okay? So what are the side effects? In general, this is very well tolerated. You can have some bruising, some blood in the urine, penile skin infection, painful erections, pain or sexual difficulty. Those are all theoretical. In general, it's extremely well tolerated with no known really even minor side effects from the treatment, okay? So where do you get it? So this is still an experimental treatment in the US. You're not gonna get this approved by insurance. You're gonna have to pay out of pocket and we don't have good data that it actually works. So you need to do go to either an academic center and do sign up for a clinical trial or there are some devices you can purchase like the Phoenix, but you have to be careful because a lot of these devices for purchase are actually a the radio waves, which is a crappier but much cheaper version that don't aren't nearly as effective. And so you have to be careful because some of these are a waste of time. I'm gonna talk about my experience with the Phoenix in just a little bit okay so as we talked about what does the data say about this okay and so this is a 350 patient study that basically was a randomized placebo controlled trial that showed that all the different energies that they used with the shockwave therapy improved erectile dysfunction okay and so there is very clear evidence that this can work for mild arteriogenic erectile dysfunction okay here's another study showing that the mechanism is still undetermined but once again you still had a very clear and very significant improvement in erectile function which with the use of the shockwave therapy. A couple of the major downfalls of some of these studies is that there's only like a one month follow-up. So only one month of improvement is seen. Next is this big meta-analysis here. I'll put it up here. And this actually looked at over 14 different studies, which when they compiled all this data, there was still a very clear benefit as far as erectile dysfunction. They looked at this in rat models as well. Usually these are rats that they basically induce diabetes. And it showed that when you expose them to shockwave therapy, you saw that there was increased smooth muscle and endothelial cell contents. You had an upregulation of the nitric oxide and VEGF, and you downregulate the pathway for fibrosis. So all of this stuff is very important and can be very important, especially when we're talking about injury prevention, injury recovery, but also potential PE applications or enlarged applications. So there's definitely very convincing studies. And so if you're interested, I'll put the link below, but here's a nice summary article that compiles a lot of these different, a lot of this different data. And there's also a paper that showed that this can actually work synergistically or together with PDE5 inhibitors like Viagra to be even more effective. Okay you know, you guys know that I'm like a big injury recovery guy. And that's where I think a lot of this data is for. So we're going to talk about some applications as far as different injuries. So number one, lymphangiosclerosis, clogged lymphatic flat ducts. And so there's actually a lot of papers like this one I'll put up here looking at actually breast lymphedema or like swelling of the lymphatic channels after surgery or after radiation. And you can see that shockwave therapy does significantly improve the, the lymphedema that they saw. They thought it was done by promoting the vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, and the fiber breast promoting lymphatic neovascularization. And so you are improving and opening these lymphatic channels. And so if you have chronic lymphangial sclerosis that is not resolved with just basically rest or gentle massage, this could be effective, okay? Fibrosis. And so penile tissue is much different than skeletal muscle, but this is an actual rabbit study that actually looked at skeletal muscle and it showed that when you use shockwave therapy in rabbits, it actually decreased the rates of fibrosis. And so um, we also saw that in those breast patients I was just talking about above, that you had decreased skin fibrosis with the use of shockwave therapy. So if you're prone to fibrosis, maybe have some starting, you could potentially use this for fibrosis. And so going along with fibrosis, of course, we can't mention that without talking about Peyronie's disease. And so here's a study here that was actually negative. They didn't see a big a big difference compared to pumping for Peyronie's disease because yes, pumping, penile pumping is an actual treatment for Peyronie's disease. But there is another study here that actually showed that there was both a benefit in the pain and in plaque size with the use of shockwave therapy. However, they questioned the basically cost to benefit ratio because this stuff can be actually very cost prohibitive, okay? Very interestingly, here's some papers that are looking at actual nerve recovery. And so this paper was in rats that actually looked um, to determine if when you basically induce a sciatic nerve injury, can you have recovery with use of shockwave therapy? And you can, okay, because it activates this axonal regeneration. Axons are different parts of the nerves, which stimulates the re the reconnection of those nerves. And so if you have nerve damage, shockwave therapy does have some data behind it, okay? Here's another paper looking at horses and showed that actually you can use shockwave therapy to 
recover from damage in horses, okay? Suspensory ligament damage, okay? And so if you, some guys, you know, do manual stretches, pull too hard, pop, and you know, damage their suspensory ligament. So here's a study looking at the suspensory ligament in horses, which is not part of their penile tissue. It's actually part of their leg muscles, okay? But it does show that um, it can absolutely aid in recovery, okay? By application of regular shockwave therapy. The one injury that I think this has no merits for whatsoever is if you have a venous leak, I don't think shockwave therapy is gonna help with that. Or at least there's no data that I've come across that shows that it's gonna help with that, okay? So when we're talking about penile enlargement, so this is the part that's pretty interesting, okay? And so, you know, all the VEGF, you know, vascular endothelial growth factors, nitric oxide, all of that stuff is very important as far as keeping the tissue healthy, but what about actual growth? Well, in this study, this looked at the collagen matrix in like tendons of horses, okay? When you apply shockwave therapy, you can lead, it leads to disorganization of the collagen network. So what the heck does that mean? It means it causes like the normal structured collagen fibers to actually be in a disarray. So you could actually argue that by basically causing that disorganization that could potentially make you more prone to growth. But, you know, we need to hold our horses a little bit here because they do mention that there is a potential benefit when you have actual damage, like tendinopathies, okay, actually problems with the tendons. However, exposing non-injured tissue to shockwave therapy should be avoided. Obviously, if you haven't damaged the, you know, the collagen structures in your penis, you don't want to with shockwave therapy. This next paper looked at animal studies once again, but it showed that actually if you exceed the optimal dose for shockwave therapy, you can literally injure the structures, and this can actually remodel the tendons to make them even more resistant to stress, okay? So how does that apply to PE? Well, if we're trying to cause the tissue to kind of break down and open up so we can cause it to expand, and we're exposing to the shockwave therapy, it can actually make that tendon even less reluctant to stretch. And so that's literally the opposite of what we want. So I don't recommend this, but in general, here's a very nice diagram of different things that actually have different applications with PE, and so you can see like you have this neoangiogenesis here you have increased tendinocyte activation and so basically the structures that are responsible for the making the tendon you can have modifications of metalloproteinases which there's really no reason for us to talk about that today so just ignore that but you have increased collagen synthesis basically all of these things can increase blood vessels and actually help to remodel the tendons mostly in the application of recovering from injury however you can still have some benefit um, otherwise Conclusion, when it comes to PE, I don't think there's enough evidence to support using shockwave therapy for PE. That's my take. You guys look at this, do your research, make your posts about it, form your own conclusions, okay? So I'm gonna br just briefly talk about my experience. So I actually bought the Phoenix. That's funny that it just happens to be right here, basically, in this box where I've left it since I bought it, okay? So why did I buy it? Well, I was interested in it, and basically just for, you know, shits and giggles, for lack of a better word, okay? Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to flex on anybody, but it was like, it was like 900 bucks. But I, I, for the sake of science, you know, I decided to buy it, okay? And so the Phoenix is actually a at-home shockwave therapy device. It is actually a mix. It's a hybrid of both the radio waves and focused shockwaves. So it's both, okay? Um, it does have pretty good success rates if you actually look at the website as far as improving erectile dysfunction. The routine was 20 minutes twice a week, okay? And once again, indicated for people with mild erectile dysfunction. So what was my experience with it? Well, I didn't see any kind of benefit whatsoever. I was doing this at the same time of PE. It definitely didn't speed up or slow down my gains. I had no difference in erectile quality because my, you know, my quality was already pretty darn good. So I saw no difference whatsoever. So what were the cons? Well, it was expensive. It was like 900 bucks though. I think there is like a $200 coupon off now. Use the code hink 10 no, i'm just kidding guys i don't have any of that stuff it was really loud guys i'm gonna find a clip and i'm gonna put it up here so you can actually hear how loud it is so yeah, it's loud. And so you need privacy to do this because like you can literally like wake up your neighbors with this like clack, 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 clack. It did not feel good, okay? It didn't hurt, but it's like this mild like sting. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. I didn't need any kind of numbing lubrication or anything like that. It just it just didn't, didn't feel good to me, okay? And it's messy because you have to like basically lubricate your shaft because so like if this is your member right here, 
sorry guys, just an Apple watch today, but like you're literally putting this probe on there and then like you're sliding it down right there. Okay. Then you move to a different position and you slide it down and clack, 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 clack. But you have to like hold your glands cause you want it in like a stretch flaccid. And so like you're holding your glands and you have like lube on your D and you're like moving this thing like down it to the timer. Wasn't an awesome experience, but overall, I mean, the pros were like, it's very high quality. You can tell it's like built very well. And it actually has this like built in timer that shows you like how much time to, to like move it down and then like goes to the next position. So it shows you like which position to use. And so it's actually very, very user friendly. Okay. Would I recommend it? No, but you know, for my purposes, which was basically just to see what would happen, there was no benefit. I don't, I don't have erectile dysfunction. Okay. But there was no PE benefit. And so one of the interesting lawsuits that adds to the credence of this is that the big like medical manufacturers were actually suing Phoenix because this is the same, basically the same device that they or similar technology that they sell to these big medical clinics for like thousands and thousands of dollars that Phoenix is like making available to you for literally a fraction of the price. And so they ended up settling, but it is kind of nice to know that other retailers were mad that they were selling this real technology for, for much cheaper, okay? So if you have like $800, $900 you wanna just throw at the wall, you know, have at it. I don't think it's helpful for PE. I don't think it's helpful for, uh, in my, in, for like an otherwise healthy guy. So what are my final thoughts? Well, I think this is very interesting technology. We need more data on it because we just don't have enough right now. If you have mild IED, I do think there's a lot of other options, like even just light pumping that might correct that, but this might be a good option for you, okay? If you're injured and you have tried other things like any of my other videos and this might be worth it to you to try it as far as PE once again I personally don't see a role and I think it could potentially be in inhibitive of gains because of that like collagen disarray and potentially strengthening that collagen but it's up to you to check out make your own conclusions okay if you're gonna do this make sure it's the low intensity shockwave therapy not the radial waves okay this can be cost prohibitive and so um, this stuff is very expensive the Phoenix is like $900 these sessions of shockwave therapy can be thousands of dollars guys and so before I go guys vigor in stock it's on Amazon it's getting great reviews if you want to maximize your quality this actually has evidence that it actually increases VEGF as well okay and so it's a solid citrulline based supplement it's going to maximize your erection quality highly recommend you check it out getting amazing reviews on Amazon and of course we got our virility if you want bigger semen loads you want better tasting semen and better semen quality check it out we also have our tap vitality in stock so leviathansups.com or on Amazon for the vigor um, if you guys need to reach me for any reason patreon.kink is where you can find me thanks so much for watching guys I truly appreciate your time Time, especially the guys that haven't clicked off the video so far. Please do your own research, form your own conclusions, and hopefully you can make a decision on if this is right for you or not. Until the next one, peace and love.